Hi, it's Steve from Part Select. Today we're going to show you how to change a drain pump motor on your washing machine and it's a really easy job. All we're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver, a small flat blade screwdriver, a pair of needle nose pliers, and a pair of slip joint pliers. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to the washer. And then with the Phillips screwdriver, we're going to remove the two lower screws on the rear brackets that hold that main top in position. Then we're just going to pull that top back about an inch and that will allow us to lift it straight up and remove it. Now next we'll pull out the soap drawer and depress the release tab to remove it completely. And there are two screws on either side of that opening so we can remove those. And depending on your model there may also be another screw on the right hand side of that control panel going into the face of it. Other models will just have some locking tabs across the top. So we're simply going to pull up on that console, release those locking tabs. Now the one on the right hand side sometimes is a bit tight so just carefully take a flat blade screwdriver and glue in between that gap of the top and the steel bracket across the front and gently release that tab. Then you can just lift up and we can simply set that control panel up on top of the cabinet. Well, next we're going to open up the door in the bottom left hand corner here. We can actually just pull that right out of the opening and set that aside. And there's a small drain hose here that we will pull out and we're going to empty any of the water that may be in that drain pump. So simply pull the end off of that hose and allow the water to drain into a container. And then set that aside. Well, next we're going to remove a single Phillips screw at the bottom of the drain clean out. Then we can pull that whole assembly out. You may need to use your flat blade screwdriver just to release it along the top. And then set that aside. Now that will give us access to a single Phillips screw right at the very bottom and that holds the bottom of the front panel in position. It's a fairly short screw. We'll set that aside. Now next we'll open the washer door and we're going to remove the band clamp around the front of that bellows. Now there's a spring across the bottom, so if we take that flat blade screwdriver and just gently go in between the spring and the bellows, and pry that spring out in a way. And then we can remove that band clamp and we'll set that aside. And then just peel the boot away from the front panel and push it into the opening. Now the door lock assembly is attached to that front panel and we don't necessarily need to remove it. All we need to do is to unplug the wire harness from the bottom of it. Now there is a little locking tab so we'll depress the tab and then pull straight down on that wire harness connector to disengage it. We can then close the door and then we'll remove the four screws across the top. And we'll need to support that front panel and door assembly as we remove the last screw. Then we can just tilt it forward, lift up slightly on it to disengage it from the three tabs across the bottom of the frame, and then we'll set that aside. 
The drain pump motor is located on the left side of that drain pump and depending on your model there may be two or three hoses attached to that drain pump and it may be secured to the base with three bolts or with a little sliding locking tab. So the first thing to do will be to remove the clamps on those hoses. Just squeeze them with the pliers and then twist the hose free. And there may still be some residual water in these hoses. Remove the clamp at the rear of the pump housing that secures the tub to pump hose. And push that back out of the way. We can then remove the remaining two screws on the front of that pump assembly. And if your model has the metal bracket that holds that pump body, you'll need to remove those three bolts. And if it does not have that, there will be a little locking tab directly under the center rear of that pump housing. Now, if your model does not use mounting bolts to secure the pump to the base, it probably has this type of mount, which is a little channel and then a locking tab in behind. So to remove the pump, you would simply push down on this locking tab and slide the pump backwards. So simply depress that and slide the pump back, and then we can lift the whole assembly out. We can disconnect the wire harness, take note of the wire colors, remove them from the pump, and then we can set that pump assembly on a suitable work surface where we can change the motor. We'll next take these three screws out and secure the pump motor to the pump body and just flex that pump motor until it breaks free. Retain the three screws. And then we'll also want to clean this area out here so that the gasket will get a nice fit. Next we'll remove this cover from the existing motor. So using a flat blade screwdriver, just go under this edge, just pry that out enough to clear it. At the same time, we'll press backwards on it, and then we can slide it right off. Just pull that off the old motor and discard the motor. And then slide it over the new one. Now we'll line that new motor up on the pump body. And there are locating tabs that will only fit in one position. Press it firmly onto the pump body and then install the three screws. Next we'll reinstall that wire harness. and tuck it under that little retainer. And then we'll set the pump into the washer. The next step will be to push that drain tube through first and lay the pump over top of it. Line it up with the guide on the base and slide it in until that locking tab engages. and then we'll secure it with the top two retaining screws. Now with the pump secured, we'll next reinstall the tub to pump hose and the drain hose. So we'll line up that hose, we'll squeeze that clamp together. We wanna make sure that that hose is firmly onto the pump body Next, we'll locate that 
drain hose. Slide that over the pump. And position the clamp. Now when reinstalling the front panel, make sure that we line up those three slots across the bottom of the front panel with the three tabs across the base at the front. Now there's probably enough room that you can reconnect that door lock harness before you completely push the panel into position. Let's make sure that the locking tab engages. Line up the screws across the top and tighten those securely. Now these are a machine type screw, so we want to make sure that they go in straight so that we don't get them cross threaded. And we can put the cap back on that drain tube. And we'll push that out through the opening. Set that housing in place. And replace the retaining screw on the bottom. And then clip that drain tube into the little holder on the side. Replace the cover. And next we'll put the band clamp on the front. So we'll want to pull that door boot back out through the opening. And then we're going to carefully engage that door boot. There is a V shape on the lip of that door boot that will fit into a V groove all the way around the opening on the front panel. So we need to make sure that that's properly engaged all the way around. So again, just verify that that's sitting flush all the way around. Then we'll position that spring at the six o'clock position. Just wrap the band into the groove. Now using a pair of needle nose pliers, we're gonna grasp the hook on the end of that spring. Make sure we have a good firm grip on it. Then we're gonna stretch that spring pulling the band all the way over to the right and that will give us enough leverage that we can pull it into the groove without damaging the door boot. Then just go around and verify that that clamp is sitting firmly into that groove. And now we're ready to put the control panel back on. Now our next step will be to put the control panel back on. You'll note across the bottom there are some locating tabs that will fit into some slots on the top of the front panel. And there are also a couple of locating tabs underneath the top lip of the control panel that will fit into these three slots across the top of the frame. So line that up, tuck it in behind that top of the front panel. And then press it into place. There's some locking tabs all the way across the top that will hold it in position. And if your model has the single screw on the right hand side at the back, you would next need to install that. You can next install the two screws that secure that to the frame, and one on either side of that soapbox opening. And then we can reinstall the soapbox. And now we're ready to put the main top back on. And we'll line up the slotted openings on either side with the shoulder screws attached to the cabinet. And again, we'll set it back about an inch from the front, push it firmly against the control panel, install the retaining screws. We're now ready to reconnect the power, and our repair is complete. I told you it was an easy job. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your repair.